Quick question. Do you believe that video games should be fun? If a game isn't fun or does not even aim to create a fun experience for the player, why would the player want to interact and play through the game in the first place? This is an important milestone that video games should usually aim for. Make sure that through the act of playing, or even thinking about the game outside of direct play, the player is experiencing fun in doing so. To that end, Many things must be adjusted across the game's development in pursuit of this seemingly straightforward and most obvious goal. Thing is, I lied at the start of this video, because this question won't be quick and fun, as it turns out, is optional. As it be a thought experiment would help. Say you're an indie dev out of Finland who aims to create a short to medium length JRPG about exploring a dungeon with some item resource management thrown in. Which means you're working mostly solo in this creative endeavor of yours, in charge of handling the art direction and making of visual assets. Let's go with mostly sprite art and some paintings, which are all in a morbid gothic style with a touch of cosmic horror thrown in for good measure. The writing, crafting the plot, world, and characters to serve the narrative, aiming to create this sense of trepidation or discomfort, where everything feels like a thick layer of grime and rot has set in. The audio direction, so the production of sound effects, ambient noises, and soundtrack, all around done minimalistically, with nothing being particularly prominent, just existing to push the dark tone even further. The coding, the nitty gritty of actually turning the assets and ideas into a playable software. The game design. So that's the whole kitchen sink. The levels, the math, logic that goes into the combat and survival mechanics, NPCs, items, equipment, the pacing, just about everything else, you know? Of course, make it difficult, frustrating, with little in the way of tutorials or sense that the player is being cared for, include numerous instant kills, a deceptively cruel save system, trial and error learning, the possibility of losing your character's limbs more or less for the rest of your save file, and let's not forget heavy RNG. In short, the game must feel distinctly unfair. That's a lot of work. Hell, that's just making the video game itself. We're not even talking about publishing the game and all the hassle that is managing its distribution with all the PR and marketing that would involve. Point is, the creation of a video game, even a solo indie project, means time, money, passion, and sacrifice to make it a reality. And our completely hypothetical, yet oddly specific example that I've laid out here seems to have a lot of interesting ideas. Though at least on paper, it doesn't really seem particularly well fun. Now as it turns out, I'm a liar again. Yep, that's twice now. Because this hypothetical developer isn't you. It's Miro Hav <clears throat> It's Miro Haverinen, an indie dev from Finland who goes by the handle Orange. And this hypothetical video game isn't just a thought experiment. It's Fear and Hunger, released back in December 2018, a horror dungeon crawler set in a fantasy medieval world within the dark and hopeless dungeons of Fear and Hunger, a title that is now receiving a resurgence in popularity years after its initial release and even led to a sequel last year. All this newfound appreciation and praise for this little indie gem, yet by all normal metrics, the game isn't fun. Because in spite of how much thought Orange put into making the player miserable, no, it is very much because he makes the player miserable, that many others and myself deem the game to be such an incredible experience. Another thought experiment then. We hop into a time machine and explore the gaming industry in the 2000s, a time when the video game landscape was a different place to what we think of it now. The sixth generation of video game consoles was coming to a close as the seventh generation rolled in. Rhythm games became all the rage with titles like Guitar Hero and Rock Band, bringing what was primarily an arcade-centric genre to the home market, though this fad was short-lived. 
the infamous hot coffee mod controversy came and went, and World of Warcraft crashed onto the scene like the Horde. Many other notable games and the franchises they spawned released in this period, of course. Far too many to spotlight. One thing is for sure though, put all of these beloved games on the spinner wheel and no matter where it lands, you'll likely end up with a fun game. If we take a quick detour and set the time machine to 2017, we'll find our answer. Because it's just like Reggie Filzame said. If it's not fun, why bother? Okay, we've turned our time machine's dial back to the 2000s now, but at the tail end of it. The year is 2009, and here we find Joseph Cassano, a passionate game developer from Canada who was working on his very own indie game project. Cassano would eventually go on to become a game developer working within the AAA video game industry to this very day, but at this point in his life, working on a video game entirely solo. He wrote a blog post that has stuck with me for most of my life. In his article titled, why the goal should be engaging, not just fun. Cassano writes, I believe that aiming for fun in the game industry is the wrong way to go. I understand this may seem a strange statement to make. To clarify then, I think that fun is too low of a goal to aim for. I posit instead that we aim for engaging. He's talking about a different way to understand how players interact with games implying that there is a distinction to be made between a game simply being amusing or enjoyable as compared to a game being able to hold your attention. Cassano also acknowledges how both are interconnected, stating, The difference in my eyes is that fun is merely a subset of engaging. Alternatively, a way for a piece to be engaging to someone is for it to be fun. This is what Reggie was talking about when he said, If it's not fun, why bother? Because Reggie's quote now takes on a whole new dimension. Let's not take this speech out of context, of course. It's a marketing video made to advertise the Nintendo Switch during the 2017 E3 conference. But he makes a good point. The Switch is a console predicated on the idea of chasing new ways to play by making a versatile console that would allow for more variety and innovation in what kinds of gameplay experiences could be created. Reggie's speech isn't really about fun, it's about engagement. Seeing the challenges or expectations a game asks of you, then tackling them head on, win or lose. Because after all, if it's not fun, why bother? It's not always about having fun. Because there's more to a gaming experience than just fun itself. It's a journey. If fun is always the goal, so much design space is simply left on the table. Cassano continues, I have heard too many people discuss the right way to make games. I posit there is no right way. As long as a player is interested in playing, the game's existence is justified. The player's engagement is all that matters and there are many more ways to engage than just by fun, as ridiculous as that may sound to some. The core of his argument is this. Video games, unlike most mediums of expression, more often than not, use the subset of fun as the primary means of engagement instead of any other subset, be it to unsettle via beauty or through abstract means, as some examples. Despite the fact that there are more subsets of engaging to speak of, it is these specific unsettling things I wish to discuss the most. This is due to the fact that I think they are really the farthest things from fun one can get, but they are still engaging. The most obvious frame of reference is horror, which relies the most strongly on the subset of engagement, to scare, to unsettle, to create discomfort, all of which contribute to the overall feeling of this genre. Fun simply isn't a major concern in the formulation of horror. But let's set aside genre for a moment. Consider this. There's no point to focus on fun if the goal is to make the audience feel something else, isn't there? That's enough time travel for now, I think. What have we learned from our little trip? Video game design often prioritizes fun, which limits the range of experiences offered to a player. So what makes games that go against this norm so different? Have you ever watched a film like 
hereditary, or viewed a piece of artwork, like the face of war, and thought to yourself, hmm, that was unfair. <laughs> Ridiculous, I know, but when Orange created Fear and Hunger and chose to include an instant kill attack that the player had no way of knowing about, from the first enemy in the game that if triggered lets you flip a coin to determine whether you live or die. What was that? Death. What kind? Instant. Which lip he did it on purpose. Because this game's journey you are about to embark on doesn't care that you didn't know about the attack, and it doesn't care that this is your first battle. It's here to set the tone, to be unfair. Pick, Orange says, pick a side, then let chance decide whether your character dies. And so you do. Fear and hunger is unfair. Fear and hunger is not fun. And that is precisely why I love it. Except this time, I'm not lying. The game is fun. The game is a battle. If it's not fun, why bother? If it's not a battle, where's the fun? It's a test that you pass or a quest that you fail. A race against time. Fun and battle always locked together. But the game is also something else. It's a journey, a passport to new worlds, maybe even an odyssey. A look, a feel, an exploration. Close your focus and open your mind. But in the end, it's not just where you can take your game. It's where your game can take you. So let's go.